Hi guys! Hello, Mary Me Too, everybody. It's only a French trip. And today, this is a short little B cast. It's Michelle Calm. And uh, we're going to cover a couple of things that we did not get a chance to mention on the live stream. Um, because I didn't really think um, they would really fit into the live stream. And uh, we're going to start with the most important thing. Um, people asked us why this man named Bird decided to hack Michelle's Discord. I can't tell you his reason for hacking Michelle's Discord. I don't know why he would waste his time to do it. But there are people that would do something. And he didn't say... Anything specifically that he wanted money or Bitcoin or anything like that. Um, it sounded like he kind of did want something. But Michelle said, nope, not going there. So she decided not to endorse his ransom. As she looked at the message real quick. She didn't go into a lot of detail on it. Because she was in the process of doing her uh, musical concert last night. And, um, and that musical concert was a very important release of energy for Michelle. I got Michelle here, of course. Uh, I'll let Michelle talk about that. Yeah, the concert was very special. Mm -hmm. And we covered a lot of different genres of music. And uh, we had a great time, and it was, a, um, a lot of people liked it. And you got a lot of copyright warnings. I got a lot of copyright warnings, but no strikes yet. Let's hope we don't get any strikes. Um, once in a while, I will do a concert. And uh, I know that you said you wanted to do some music, too. I do, yeah. But I don't know if um, how well that's going to go. Second thing we wanted to both cover is the doctor's appointment. And I just called the doctor's office. And it was confirmed that I was not referred out for my ear or my leg or my foot. I'm a little bit surprised why... Um, it's almost like my PCB doesn't think either one is really significant enough to require a referral. Um, I, I kind of disagree with them. I think with the ear especially, it would be advantageous to have gotten that referral. The mental health referral, I did not ask him about the mental health referral. Um, more than likely, he would have me go to BHC, which I already have a, a, a direct contact with somebody at BHC. I just got to go ahead and get in contact with Michelle in the financial aid program. There's actually two Michelles in the office. Um, and get the new application filed for the next six months for the um, therapy if we feel it's necessary. But like me and Lumi have said is since we have had a chance to work it out and to gather our senses together that we are doing a lot better. Yes. And also, unfortunately, um... Michelle's channel is also doing better. Now, people are wondering if I was jealous of Michelle. No. I'm not. I'm actually jealous of Michelle's channel. And I'm not jealous of Lumi's either. In fact, except the fact is Lumi is much more successful um, in a lot of ways with some of the audience. And, um, and that's important to remember. Lumi is a good person. And um, so, yeah, you're going to... Uh, have your uh, people have their differing opinions on, on content, but that's okay. Um, Stacy and me and Lumi um, 
had a conversation yesterday where it was off the record. It was nothing on the record. And uh, we talked about um, the things that me and Lemmy do. And she said, my personal observation is, she says, you and Louie are very distinctly different people. Now, I know that some people would say, take that with a grain of salt. Yes, I agree. Um, but, you know, also, several other people have said the same thing, is that I find it absolutely interesting to see how you and... Um, you got to really put some, um, what is laying on that itchy spot? Actually, it's not really that bad right now. No, it's not that bad right now. Uh, I mean, it's the, the most important thing is that we are doing better. I lost four pounds of weight. I got the lab results back from... The um, bone density scan, yeah, which I did in October, and he, Dr. Lubima said the only place where you have lost any calcium is in your tailbone of your spine. Um, and I said, so what would cause that? He said, age. He said, you're not, you know, you're getting older. Um, he wants me to go back and get an, uh, another mammogram. Which is not a problem. I can do another mammogram, but it's no big deal. I've done one last one. Last one I did fine. I had no masks. Everything was clean. Um, he wants me to do a poo sample um, to make sure that there is nothing irregular with my gastrointestinal tract, which when I... I described to him my gastrointestinal tract. He says, yeah, he says, you easily are going to have the kind of situation you're having because of the way, in fact that your liver is dysfunctional. Your liver is not producing the right amounts of bile. And uh, it is going to have an effect on your, um, your digestive system. And I said, well, another thing I want to know is what would cause um, my weight gain. And I said, because I tried not eating gluten and I seem to do a little bit better. He said, well, maybe you could have you could have Crohn's disease, you could have celiac disease. Um, you could have something that's related to your liver. Um, he said, but you sure drink a lot of milk. I said, yeah, I do. And it doesn't bother me, milk. It does not cause any kind of irritation. So I definitely think that there is something in my digestive system that is wrong. Yeah, I think it's very likely. But he did not give me a referral again. So I don't know if there's some reason why he didn't. Or did he? He sent you a referral for the mammogram. Maybe he can only send one referral all the time. That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I'll have to ask him about that. I see him again in a few months. Um, I definitely think um, that I don't really want to see how we're doing. And also, I think you did great with the eyebrow. I think Leo and I both did great with the eyebrow today. And it looks really good. And I'm impressed. Thank you. You are cute. <laughs> no, seriously, guys, she is cute. I mean, you go. Um, but, you know, the, some people would say, is, why don't you do your hair like this for real? Well, there's the thing. If I did my hair like Lumi's hair, is, what would Lumi have for hair? Uh, and, you know, the real hair... You would have to use a flat iron and a curling iron, and because your hair is naturally wavy, it would be really kind of awkward, because you'd have to use a flat iron on it, and your hair would just potentially burn up. Absolutely. In fact, it would be have to be cut about the short anyway, just to regrow, because of the amount of damage that would have to be done to fix it. Yeah. Um, that's absolutely true. Um... 
So what we've been doing, me and Lemmy have been doing, is with all the issues that are now uh, being, you know, becoming less of an issue, um, we have been able to enjoy ourselves. Uh, we've been able to relax. We've been able to um, use the the strategies that were taught to me to de anxiety and to get my emotions back into a stable situation. And that's what we've been doing. We've been working on that. And oh yes, I know it's a little late, Loom, but. Um, I'm sorry I didn't say happy anniversary on May 1st. It's okay. I, I don't really have a problem with that. I know why it happened. You know, it was just a lot of BS that was going on. You know, because the reason I say it is because here's why. If I look at everything, at how much you and I have been through... The years, I know, it's a sound by Kenny Rogers. Through the years, we have gone from a person, for me, a person that was a, um, totally uh, insecure, frightened, unsure person with an MGAF of 25, I think it was 25, I think it was 32, but okay, go on, to a person with an MGAF of 50. And for those of you who don't know what MGAF stands for, it is something that stands for uh, Ability of Functionality. It was a, a rating system, and that's spelled M-G-A-F, MGAF. Um, and it is a, a guideline for uh, ability to function, modified guideline to ability to function. And in a perfect world, a person should have at least an MGAF of about um, 70 to 80 is average, is normal. Unfortunately, if you're going from an MGAF of 32, 35 to MGAF of 50, you're doing better, but you're still struggling. One MGAF limiting factor that had to be included is my eyesight and my hearing, which is still a valid issue because those are not going to go away. Um, because that are physical limitations that have to be added into the score. So the point is, is that with Lumi's help, I have made major inroads in positive successes in my treatment, in my recovery. And uh, I'm very proud to have Lumi as part of my life. And last of all is I'm proud of the support network I have, the ones I do have. Including, yes, I want to give a list of names. This is kind of a exclusive group um, video anyway. I might make it public. I don't know. Um, Rachella. R11H30. Yes. Uh, Forever Consciousness, you are on my list of supports. Um, Kirsty. Uh, Scott and Stacy. Um... And a few others, including Cringe Report, which kind of was the one who got me on the uh, uh, exposure on the internet with who is Cringe Report channel with the one's called I found the next Christian. And I think that it's important to remember all the great things that have happened over the period of time. And I want everybody here to know that it is been a really major accomplishment in the ten, nine years I had my YouTube channel. And actually, I've actually had my YouTube channel since July of 2010, but I didn't actually start streaming until May, or I think it was April or May of 2011. Yeah. And that's important to keep in mind. So, when I started streaming, I was not that good at all. I was just, I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. Technically, I knew I had the right setup going, even though it was just an iPhone 3GS. 
being held in my hand, with an arm laying on my laser printer, but the look of the actual video made me look like a very scared person because emotionally, I don't think I had it quite ready yet. That would come up much later on as I worked on continued adding new content, um, getting more familiar with what YouTube was and the kinds of people on YouTube. And with Lumi's help, yes, Lumi is an important support as well because she's not afraid to defend me and protect me because she knows that so many people, including my own mother, will not protect me or defend me from harm. Well, I meant that's sad, but it's true. And so we have gone, you know, so far in life and we, we, we're still improving in our performance and our creation. And that's important. And, um, and I, you know, I, I thank all of those of you who've supported me and then, of course, Lomi, who's been supporting me. And uh, as far as Lomi's desire for autonomy, there is one thing I want to point out, and Lomi knows this, is when I'm by myself and Lomi is just in the back room watching the equipment of the, of the television monitor, I feel alone. And it's... It's a, like a planned timeout for the both of us. So when I'm doing my show, and if Lumi's not there in the studio, um, please respectfully understand that Lumi cannot speak for me. Okay? She can speak for herself, but she won't speak for me. The same thing in my channel. If I'm, I'm, if I'm the only one on the show and Lumi's not there, and unless Lumi comes in and says hello... I cannot speak for Lemmy. Um, that may not make sense to some people, but for us, um, that's important to keep in mind that we have agreed that we wanted to have days where we're going to have total non, um, total um, self autonomy, and that's because we want people to feel comfortable with both of us as individuals, and Lemmy is very much also trying to recover her own self and uh, reinvest in her own self, just as I am. Because the trauma or the drama community did a number on both of us. And so we both needed to take a time out from each other for a time be to reestablish our own autonomy and that's something that may surprise a lot of people and I I'm sorry if if you have a hard time understanding this because this is beyond what you were ever taught in school but it's life is not always what you see in a textbook um, there are so many times when things happen in life that cannot be explained away and, um, and it's really, really so important that you have an open mind and be willing to ask questions beyond the textbook answers. Rachella has done this. Um, Stacy has done this. A few others have questioned this and said, Am I to judge Lumi or Michelle? The fact is that they are in love with each other and they're married to each other and they have sex with each other. Am I really the one to sit there and say that's impossible when we see conjoined twins and we see um, strange weather patterns that defies explanation? Am I the one that can just say is prove it or it never happened and then find out that I cannot deny that there is a facial expression difference between the two and that the two clearly do communicate with each other. Am I the one to say that that's impossible? I, you know, somebody have said to me, I don't know if I can just 
dismiss Lumi and your love and your existences. And let's ask another theoretical question. What if I am the real Michelle? What if Michelle, what you see, isn't the real Michelle? See, now that's, what, that's a good question because everybody assumes that I'm the real Michelle. And they assume that you're not real. But what if what is the opposite? I mean, let's just throw that out. This is a mind game. Just a mind puzzle. Figure it out. If Lomi is really me, and I'm and and I'm not Lumi. So if Lumi is really me, and then who am I? Uh, maybe I'm the fake one. If that's the way some people think about it, I don't know. The point is, is the reality is, is the name says on the birth certificate Michelle Marie Delaney. The lease says Michelle Marie Delaney. My phone bill says Michelle Marie Delaney. My electric bill says Michelle Marie Delaney. My internet bill says Michelle Marie Donnie. But given the way the universe works, what if Lumi, according to this mind puzzle, is Michelle Marie Donnie? If that's the case, who am I? See, see, you could get into that situation where everything that you thought was right could be totally wrong. Of course, you really are Michelle Marie Delaney. Yes, I am really Michelle Marie Delaney. I'm just using this as a mind, mind puzzle. The point here is, is every single person assumes something, and then when they see the results, they go, oh, wait a minute, that's not right. But it's wrong, but how could it be wrong? It, wouldn't, it goes, defies explanation. If you are a person who believes in an open mind, you might say, okay, wait a minute. So if Michelle, in this hypothetical example, is not real and Lumi is really Michelle, then what if, you know, what does that mean? If we were to do uh, the idea of thinking that we can kill off Lumi, would we really be killing off Michelle? Um, it's it's a it's a it's a great question, and I'm sure somebody a philosopher would seriously go, "I can't answer that question. It's too strange." I say, there are questions in the universe that one cannot always get the answers for, but rather we'll need to just basically go by their gut instinct. And if your gut instinct disagrees with my gut instinct, that's fine. But, you know, the point is, you can bring it up in a polite way and we can discuss it. But if you're going to go out there and say, oh, I reject your reality and substitute my own, I say you're a flaming asshole. If that's what you think about me, you see me and Lumi is a flaming asshole because we disagree with what you're saying. That's not a very nice thing to say. Remember what Lumi said today about courtesy and being polite and manners. You can say a lot to somebody without offending them and still be very, very clear on how you feel about a subject. Absolutely. You can be anything in the world you want. You can, and if you really want people to listen to your argument, you need to present your argument in a way that is indicative that you had researched it and thought it through and have a good set of points and counterpoints. If you have those, if you have a solid argument for a solid debate, you may win some people's uh, support. But if you just going out there in a flame fest, you're not likely to get too many supporters. Right. And the other thing is, is that what does it honestly matter about me and Lumi do 
behind closed doors. It's just like the song by Charlie Pride, Behind Closed Doors. If me and Lumi are happily enjoying each other's intimate company and we having a good time and, and it makes us happy, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If I don't think it really would make a... I don't think it matters what we do in the bedroom or and what we're eating in the kitchen or what we're listening to on the record player or in our MP3 collection. It doesn't matter because it's us. It's our time. And lately, let's be honest, one of the most important things that we ended up sacrificing after all the baloney that was going on was the time that me and Lumi used to have together. And I missed that time because that was when me and Lumi could just basically do the equivalent of take off all the mantle of the daily bullshit and then just get into our weekend clothing attire. Which obviously it's summer coming, right? So it would be like the equivalent of a bathing suit, right? A bathing suit going out to the equivalent of the pool, soaking out some sun, maybe having a, a, a barbecue, using terms that you guys can understand here because it makes it easier. If I was to explain what we really do, you totally would never get it. That's to us, that is important. And that is the reason also that Lumi and I have wanted to have our own autonomy is because people have said, I don't like Lumi. And then on Lumi's channel, they say, I don't like Michelle. I want to know the host that's hosting the content. And that's absolutely fine. Yes, absolutely. And you should know the host. You should. I mean, there are husband and wife teams that do YouTube channels, and there are husband and wife channels that have either A, he has one and she has another, or like in the um, on the Hydraulic Press channel, where the husband and wife together are doing a YouTube channel. And that's absolutely, totally cool. Nothing wrong with that. So... I mean, I am glad to know that some of you are truly concerned about our well-being. I understand that. But please do keep in mind that we are also concerned about our well-being. We were taught coping strategies on our last time that we were there for the last six months. We were taught coping strategies to deal with the issues that affect our mind. We were, sh we were told ways to help deal with the information. And Kathy Moran was very clear. If you have any more problems with the trolls, if you have, totally think you're going to lose it. And if Lumi and you both agree that something has to be done, do not be afraid to come back in. She respectfully appreciates what Lumi has done for me and for her. I say her being Lumi. Lumi benefits too from this, and we both do. And uh, this year, I have every intention to get out there in the sun more. And that's what I'm going to do. Mention photography. It isn't like because I didn't want to take pictures. Hell, it's been raining like crazy for the last few days. In some parts of the country, it's still raining like crazy. So who's going to sit outside? in the dripping rain, trying to take pictures. You know, that sucks. You know, it's like, I wouldn't mind when it's sunny and I can go to the park and I used to do live streams and I used to have fun. Um, 
And I, I gotta admit, even if I was at the park, even if we had live streaming ability the way we used to have it, we couldn't have seen the questions anyway because the screen was washed out from the sunlight. Uh, but it, hey, you know, the point is, is that it was a very important thing to be able to do. Um, but yeah, we've come a long way and we're going to go a long way. Um, I know sometimes we cover things in our channels that are totally uncomfortable for a lot of people. But one of the things that I prefer is I prefer being straight out honest with all of you, not just a few. If I feel a certain way, I'm not going to pussyfoot around and say something else. If I feel depressed, I'm going to tell you I feel depressed. If I'm angry, I'm going to tell you. It is true. A lot of people with Asperger's may not be able to show it in their face, but they can certainly tell you, I'm depressed. I feel inadequate. I feel that I'm being pushed too hard by this person or that person. They may not be able to show it in their facial expressions clearly, but when it comes to actually expressing it in words, people one time said, uh, I think it was Stacy said this one. She said, I am so gutted that I, talking about herself, she said this one time, I don't know how to say it in words how I feel. Ask any person who is a writer. A lot of writers happen to be a people with autistic spectrum disorder. How can you express deep sorrow or deep depression in the written word? It's not impossible. It actually just takes a little thought. Um, and that's a fact. It's true. Um... And one of the things that my channel we used to do was we used to cover a lot of spirituality. Yes, you did. And we ended up going live streams. And I think it was because I felt that the live streams were going to do better than covering vlogs with spirituality topics. My personal experience um, is the live streams are great for for earning minutes but in viewers but if you want to get a major successful topic out the live stream is like traveling a long meandering river with lots of slow eddies you're not going to get much done in the time allowed you're going to basically be constantly getting cut up in the eddies and the currents of the river. So you'll be floating down the river even slower than ever. But if you are riding a bee cast, it is like going in a paddle wheeler, like a steamboat. Now you can go straight from right down the old Mississippi and go straight to New Orleans and you know that your people are going to get your topic. Versus sitting in a rowboat without any oars. That's a big difference. A bee cast is like being in a steamboat. A live stream is like being in a rowboat. But all you got is oars. And you're just going to basically be going much slower. It's going to meander on. It's not going to have the kind of concrete punch in your face. This is the way it is. Bim bam done that you get in a live stream. It's not going to be there. It's going to be in the B cast or in a vlog. That's when you get straight to the face and it is clear, it is concise, and it's not something that's easily avoidable. And that's what you have to do. Agreed. Um, anything else? Um, just the fact is I want you to know that I appreciate everything you have done and what you're doing now and all the effort that you're putting into your content. 
and I really do want to see your channel continue to grow. And I also am going to have to try to find a way to make my channel better too. So it's not just Lomi has to make her channel grow. I got to make it grow. I'm going to make my own channel grow. Thank you. All right, guys. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching this. We will see you real soon. Yep. I have my live show tomorrow on Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. UK time. And when we will be live again um, in the daytime on Wednesday at 1. Oh, actually, do you won't because, of my hair, because I have my hair appointment. Right. So I'll be on after that. She'll be on after that. Okay, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.